All right, welcome back. The Taliban has killed a woman for not wearing her burqa in public. This is according to Fox News. Her death comes the same day the Taliban vowed to honor women's rights. A spokesperson for the Taliban saying they would honor these women's rights within the norms of Islamic law, so Sharia law. He would not elaborate on the Taliban, uh, how they've encouraged women to head back to school and work. Here's what State Department spokesperson Ned Price said yesterday. We've heard uh, quite a bit uh, from Taliban officials over the past uh, hours and, and even several days. Uh, this is, we are, we are taking stock uh, of everything that they have said. Most importantly, we are going to be looking for how they, at how they comport themselves, uh, at the way they treat their people, uh, at how they fulfill the obligation, the solemn obligation they have to respect the basic and fundamental rights of all of their people, including half of their citizens, uh, the women and girls of Afghanistan. Keep in mind, of course, this has never been done by the Taliban in the history of the Taliban. And joining us now is Nancy Branker. She's a former U.S. ambassador to Hungary under President George W. Bush. She's also the host of Conversations with Nancy Brinker right here on Newsmax. Also with us, columnist at The Hill and author of The Liberal Invasion of Red State America, Kristen Tate. Great to have you both with us. Ambassador Brinker, first to you, you on this one. I wanted to get your reaction to what Ned Price was saying there. Of course, you know, we all would love to hold the Taliban to account for doing these things, but we're hearing different stories on the ground of Afghanistan right now. Isn't it a little bit naive for not only Ned Price, but also uh, for Linda Thomas-Greenfeld at the UN to be saying, we demand these things from the Taliban when they have never mm -hmm. been willing to <coughs> live up to these obligations before? You're right, uh, John. And, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around, around for this uh, that, that just makes me so sad and so concerned, really. Um, I think one of the best articles I've read in terms of women's issues uh, was today in the Wall Street Journal by my friend Charity Wallace, who was my deputy as I served for chief of protocol and also a deputy to Mrs. Bush for some years. She writes, the nightmare resumes for Afghan women. And there are 15 million women living in Afghanistan, and they've made great steps going forward because we educated people. We got organizations to help understand, help the Taliban understand and meet with them, but also the Afghani citizens, that if they educated their women, if they allowed them to make uh, steps forward, allow them to be active and in their families and in their communities uh, and lead, everything would go better. And indeed it was. This has been 20 years of a massive effort. Um, my friend Laura Bush has been uh, involved in this from the beginning. Uh, and Honestly, when I see what has been done and now the danger these women have, the danger, John, is so enormous. The woman being killed last night, this is just the beginning. The abuse, the attacks. What are they supposed to do? Spend the rest of their lives now? Go back and living in burqas? Well, and, that's, and I mean, it's, it's not human what, what's going on. That's the reality we're facing. And Kristen, I think, you know, the kind of grotesque irony of this is that, you know, every single female that was appointed to a high level position in the Biden administration, they talked about how historic it was and the glass ceilings that were being broken. But they were obviously more focused on that than this in Afghanistan. Uh, and yet here we are, you know, 20 years, treasure, yeah. sweat, blood, lives lost. Uh, and the one silver lining for many of us who knew this was a waste of American effort uh, in Afghanistan is that there were significant changes for the women there and that this might be the hope that might justify all that had been wasted and lost. That's right. And, and I agree with everything that Nancy just said. It's so tragic what's happening there to the women on the ground in Afghanistan. I will say uh, that there is a very good argument that we should have left Afghanistan a long time ago. I'm sympathetic to those arguments. We have a lot of problems here at home where we could be directing our time and resources. But the way in which this was done, it, it's just catastrophic. It's tragic. There are still thousands of Americans left in Afghanistan. Uh, so, you know, this, this is really going to harm the Biden administration politically uh, for the first time, really, since Biden has taken office. 
this. I have seen uh, figures in the mainstream media who have really been apologists for this administration for the first time speaking critically about Joe Biden and the decision he made and the way that this was done. It's created suffering on a scale that we've not seen before. And it's just so sad, John. But I will say, I, I, you know, I do think we should have left Afghanistan a long time ago. We've got a lot of problems here at home. And if you want to talk about the rise in terrorism and the threat of terrorism in this country, we should, we should be talking about the southern border as well, which is wide mm -hmm. open. And, you know, people in the Middle East or around the world, really, who want to do harm know they can just fly to Mexico and walk right across our open border and come into this country. We will talk about that later. I do want to focus on these uh, women in Afghanistan. And, you know, Ambassador Brinker, you have, uh, you know, obviously everyone knows your history uh, with charity work here. We do want to highlight some organizations which you know have done good in the area of refugee resettlement in the past, SaveTheChildren.org, Rescue.org. And, you know, I'm often critical of the United Nations, but the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council here, the refugee resettlement effort, it is actually pretty decent for what they, you know, what they are tasked with. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about these agencies, Ambassador Brinker, and what they actually do well, in Afghanistan. Yeah, well, well, things were, were really gelling. I mean, there were some great stories. I do think the way we went in, it's never easy to go into a country, into, a, into this kind of situation, and it's even harder to leave. And um, these organizations, which will be listed, I understand, after we finish talking, I would, yeah, they're on the I would screen just heartily now, Nancy. suggest... Good. I, did, I just so uh, encourage people to become active in these organizations, send a donation, don't lose faith in them, and we have to let these women know we care, we believe in them, and we have to hold people accountable. It's as if we went in there with, without a plan understood by, I guess, seemingly a lot of people, hmm. and, and yet announcing what we were going to do to our enemy. I mean, it's just been... It's been astonishing and heartbreaking to watch this. But I do encourage people to sign up for these charities. You can go to the uh, website of the Bush Institute and find other organizations uh, and what has been done and get more detail about this. But I encourage everybody, get involved. And with the UN, they shouldn't be let off the hook. They need to be very involved in this. And we need to put forward real programs that can be funded, followed, and adopted in a situation like this. Yeah, there's a lot of, as you mentioned, a lot of blame to go around. I know some people are very, very critical of the Bush administration, but we have talked at length about the First Lady Laura Bush's efforts uh, to improve the lives of women in Afghanistan, yeah. and that is beyond reproach. Nancy, thank you so much for your time. Kristen, thank great you. to see you as always. We'll talk soon. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.